two minutes 50 piosic there's a reason why his kindred's fear poor jj with a root but oh. no he fails it as he flashes away it's an early catch but no only for paladin piosic wants to trade this off flash away from slater and an ulti okay i thought it okay I still have three seconds. Okay, don't it. And shut on, boys. Okay, nice. That's a very fast little rat. And I think he would have flashed if he had Oh, he's done! Oh! It's a slicing match on the back line. ABM might have brought it back. As you said, he pops, he blossoms. TL, I'm back on in this. Guys, you don't have to be depressed anymore. They don't need no Baron. They're just going to kill all the champions. Team Liquid is still in this one, and the difference between the shot that I saw of the casters at the end of game one and the one that we're seeing now is just as big as the difference that TL showed us, I think, <sighs> in the game. Um, yeah, Pioshik with his world's skin, with a lot of skin in the game, he said, I'm gonna go out flashy or I'm gonna stay in this series, and he did, Jack. He absolutely did. First Blood was a little bit fortunate that it didn't go over to the Draven, instead the Renata, and then Piosic can clean up afterwards. Also gives Yawn a little bit of an experience lead in this lane, which allows them to get some repeat ganks since all the summoner spells were burned. And Piosic just kept stacking up his own income there and was able to carry the game. And I think Kindred in particular is one of those picks where if you do get an early lead, the pick can feel so oppressive. Once you start stacking, you can go for the really aggressive plays. And I do think that even though I was somewhat skeptical as to whether the team comp would work into like Draven, Vi, these type of picks that are going to always try and play for really aggressive mm. deep dives, the value of a Kindred ultimate when used by someone who's very adept at it can be game winning. And for there were multiple skirmishes and, and some of the mistakes that were kind of, uh, you know, taken care of by the existence of that Kindred ult. Yeah, I mean, the cannon also had a hard time, specifically in the 1v1, oh, yeah. of course, but yeah. you can't really expect to be making those 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 deep flanks or, like, the angle to approach the team fight if you're constantly being marked by, uh, by someone who did a great job. Yeah, I think there's a lot of things that went well for TL this game that didn't go well in Game 1, the Nico being one of those things for APA, and it's not necessarily something that happens from the laning phase. I always like to think of comfort picks as allowing you to play the game after laning phase, because because anyone can play 100 solo queue games like APA did of Orianna and Syndra and learn that laning phase well, but it's what comes afterwards and specifically the highlight plays of right here in the side lane when you don't really have time to think or plan, just knowing how to turn this play around. Flash, double root, gets the kill. The final team fight here as well, where he's just making these really big game deciding plays in the team fights are things that just don't happen when he's playing on Syndra or Orianna, but it's because he's not necessarily thinking about how to play the champion, he's just thinking about how to play the game, and that makes the world of difference in these high pressure situations. And particularly uh, against any opponent you're going to find on the world main stage, even though Gam obviously is towards the bottom of that end, right? They made it through play-ins. They still beat a lot of teams that have spent their entire year trying to perform here at Worlds. So I think that those couple of split seconds can really be the difference maker. And I hope, for their sake, that they're able to get something similar for APA in the next game. It's true from the side of Gam. This is a story you've seen a couple of times before when a team that isn't favored going into the matchup is the mm. underdog. They get a first game win. They're actually competing in the second but they don't win that becomes harder because then that high you've been riding for the entire day yeah. gets slammed into the ground and you need to get back up it also gives you time to think which That's is true. the last thing you want to do when you're the underdog yeah. going into these matchups you're like oh we, we could actually win yeah. like what's the and there's, oh now it matters that we lost rather than when game one they kind of came in you with think nothing oh to lose. maybe it was without uh, outside of our reach and then you think no yeah. actually now it's, it's in fully reach, in and then, reach. It, then it becomes hard it yeah. is difficult indeed but you said it right Jat. Uh, you called out the nico specifically actually as mm -hmm. something that you wanted to see APA on. And I want to pull up the draft from the first two games. Gam select blue side, so we'll talk about them with that in mind. Going into this deciding game, the game that will decide your world's life. So on the side of TL, I think that even though I really like uh, specifically the combo of the Jarvan with the Orianna uh, protecting this uh, this Avalius, we saw that it didn't actually end up working, right? I would expect that that J4 is going to get off the ban list. Gam is going to go for more bans toward APA instead, because I do think that we've seen other teams go for both the Nico and the ban uh, on the Ziggs instead of just the Ziggs.
Phoenix. And that might be a big difference maker because it does feel to me like APA is kind of the crux of making it work for Liquid. Yeah, on the side of Team Liquid, I think they're going to be faced with this, uh, I almost want to call it this Oriana problem because I imagine Gamma is going to select blue side since they have choice they for have the first blue, time yeah. in the series. And that really pinches the red side bands for Team Liquid because it was Maokai, Oriana, and Rumble that they banned here, except then they have the opportunity to first pick the Zaya, which is going to be going over to Gam. So I definitely think Gam is going to be a little bit more draft favored here. And the one player we haven't talked about that much on Team Liquid is Yawn. Yeah. He's had a really poor world. He is a rookie. He hasn't been performing that well on stage. And now I feel like he's going to be in a disadvantaged AD carry matchup if the Zaya goes over as a first pick for Gam. So it is nice that they've been able to break the seal, get their first world's win, but they need to finish it up here and get the second one. <laughs> and social media gold, by the way, the the Gam crew. Um, we were talking about it in the in the break room, the break room, the green room. We watch uh, as well, Jad. That you kind of take inventory of this team Liquid lineup and you think, yeah. wow, with these super experienced Korean players with yeah. world champions, and you kind of over focus on it, and you sometimes forget that APA and John are like very new players. They're fresh players to the international stage, and they will be making some more mistakes. And they are loud, frankly. They are, and then also the experienced players are experienced mistakes. Makers, Summit okay. and Kyosik, like just literally they, they go for yeah. the big plays consistently. So it just creates a very inconsistent environment. And that's, I think, the reason that game two worked better than game one, because game one was a cookie cutter Jarvan Oriana standard. Game two was very much like a stride breaker Renekton with a Nico mid and a Kindred jungle. It's all these Team Liquid character picks that don't actually have good team fight structure, but that's kind of where they thrive. Like this is not a team that actually is good at team fighting. So just pick really strong individual skirmishers and try and make the best of it. And, and Summit, I, I want to again reiterate, he has been this exact guy <laughs> for five, like since 2018 Sandbox. Like he has oh, been man. the exact same player, as someone who's gotten very invested in Sandbox books in the past in these high pressure games that where we see him sometimes fall back in these kind of situations where you know should you really push out an extra wave but he does and that is yep. something that i think here he's not gonna be allowed to do because it's up to him and bioshik to take the rest of the team and say guys get it together we're gonna do this Team Liquid and Gam on the brink of ending their world's run here or of continuing on and fight another day who will it be let's head over to our casters Thank you very much, Sox, and welcome back for the final game of this series. I'll just tell them a little bit, a bit about Mount Druid back home, but that'll come for a little bit later, I'm hysterics. <laughs> this is Kobe, this is Azale. For those that know... Some of these Australian sayings... We, now you have to say it! I had to balance it out because, again, what's between Vietnam and America? Naturally, if you know geography, it has to be Australia, which I don't know where geography... We know. live in America, we don't know geography. Oh, you don't? Well, Check me. I was going to go Hawaii. <laughs> uh, fair, that's my, in the middle. My Much geography accurate, descent was about as good as that, so it doesn't matter. Regardless, in-between <laughs> points seems to be natural because Gam with game one, and it was an early game fumble, but they brought it back in the end. TL made our hearts race with the Baron Steel. Yeah, they let come through. So it's been really back and forth this series. Honestly, I think w with how chaotic this is, TL should again just go with whatever full comfort pick you want personally, like just that. as an individual, you know? I think Kindra's getting banned now. Um, there, nope, no Nico. No, they, didn't they, like that. They got targets set on APA, and I'm not surprised why. This has worked for a lot of teams to full target on him. But it means that they're going to be dropping some of their bans, right? They banned out Lee Sin. Do you want to ban out Kindred? Do you ban Lee Sin again? Do you ban the Viego, right? Yep. Like, So there's something that's going to be dropped because they're adding in these new bans. Uh, and they are going to be on blue side, which has been dominating. Of course, it's a little bit... It's, it's a little bit of a fraudulent stat because the higher seeds are always choosing blue side as well. Uh, yeah, so yeah. that is kind of skewing it. Yeah. Um, but blue side definitely really strong in this meta. Uh, and I'm interested to see what they do elect with this final ban. It's clearly a big discussion. There was no hesitation in game one or two, but now they've lost, it's a little bit back to the drawing board and they're not sure. I certainly think the rumble ban is a good one here uh, for Team Liquid to take that away. Kiaya had massive, massive damage output with that one and not nearly the impact with the cannon. So I uh, like that. and. They did split, so giving at least the one respect ban to Pioshik, banning away the Kindred. That, the, however, leaves open his two recent favorite champions, which are Viego and Lee Sin. Yep. And he might be able to punish with those. And also there's potential. I was going to say, if they left up Ori, there could be the Zaya ori trade. If you ban Ori, it's just such an easy first pick on that Zaya. I don't think TL will give over the Lover's Duo like we saw it happen last time. Yep. Uh, the Gam elected to actually let that happen because Core is a big fan 
of that Rakan, and I think Kai'Sa Rakan is probably the answer that they're going to be grabbing. Personally, at two, when you pair with this and you're building out the full team comp, if you go and start with the uh, Kai'Sa Rakan combination, then you can add in the Rel and have a really big uh, two-layered engage. So then, even though Zaya is so good at counter engage, you can still get it. Oh, but as you said, you know, when you want to target Pio Stick in another way, Diego Lee Sin, baby. What's left open? He's got his choice. Even though the Kais is not picked in in the end, why pick it now? We've already denied the Lovers duo. You guys hit the nail on the head. Yeah, and I mean, it is interesting, right? Because if you if you lock this here, um, you know, that does kind of protect the pick, but at the same time, maybe they're worried, hey, Levi could take it away. I do think this makes the most sense, though, but Kaisa has not been doing very well at Worlds. Uh, has been losing almost all the matchups into the Zion. Pardon? Neither has Jan. True. <laughs> uh, there oh, you go. Well. It's a, a match made in heaven. Um, <laughs> But I, I want to see where Levi's going to go, and it is going to be the Wukong. So Wukong is really kind of falling out of favor. It's gotten a few picks, uh, but this champion got nerfed a while ago and has really kind of been out of the pro meta mostly since then. But this is a lot of team play, a lot of engage, a lot of burst again. And, and if you watch the VCS, this was still one of Levi's most played champions. He is now most played by a 26 lot. and 4, I believe, on this. So. With a lot of pe other people wow. drop Wukong, Kanavi did not really drop it, and Levi certainly did not drop it. This is a huge power pick. He's undefeated so far at Worlds with it as well, uh, with a three wins in plans, I believe. Yeah, so he, he has 12 games overall yes. this year, 91.7% win rate on it. Woo. Obviously, they were very dominant in their region. And as far as the career stats, I can check on that for you too. This is also a pretty uh, comfort pick for APA. He's always been a big fan of the Ari. Uh, into the Syndra here. Let's see about some early jungle attention. They did end up dropping PO6 pick though. They Team did. Liquid uh, they in favor of getting comfort here for APA. It does come at the cost of possible what I would assume are Lee Sin Viego bans. But honestly, like I don't care. If they ban Lee Sin Viego here, you still would have Jarvan, so Jarvan's gonna be banned. If they I, ban I that stuff, my rel then there's too. Rel, exactly, right? So. so I think that there's a, enough jungle options that you don't have to early pick it unless you're like, I must have this because I'm gonna carry on it. Um, so it is gonna be interesting. You generally assume that there is going to be kind of those physical damage and point and click CC pairings with Ari. Vi Ari was always the one that everyone talked about. That yep. was such a common pairing, but it did kind of really fall out of favor. So I'm interested to see if they're going to be banning out just more physical damage junglers here, those pairings alongside uh, what APA is going for. But the Renekton band as well. I just want to quickly touch on because if TO on red side here, if we're expecting to see priority on jungle, is it left to last? Do we get topside counter pick for Summit? Like, what's the play yeah. here for TL? It's 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 for fifth sure pick for Summit, top. 100%. Yeah. Like, okay. When they're playing red side, it feels like it's almost always that because this is a guy who's been such a good laner throughout his entire career across multiple leagues. You know, I think Rel works here. I think that there are other options that you could just go Vi. It's probably one of those two in my mind, but Diego also open is a favorite. So I think it's kind of between those three, and it's really just dealer's choice. Yeah, I mean, it's that's just general drafting etiquette usually. Oh, wow. But they end up going with the Jax first, showing it that with full really confidence. Surprising. And that really is Summit saying, with the Renekton and Rumble band, I don't care what you play into the Jax. You know, he's okay with a Cassante matchup. He what wants the Jack side of it. He wants to carry. That is that is confidence from Summit, and we've seen that all year from him. No, 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 no. It's no. just a shout out. It's just a shout out. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I got you with me, Kobe. I, I like I like this seal though, because I really yeah. think the Rakan plus Rel is is one of the few combinations for support jungle that guarantees you uh, those engages. So really good seal away here, and it's good for Pallet. So Juani. Okay, so they're going really just for the, the top side play. Yeah. You're doing this melee pairing with the Jacks. So it is the Sejuani. It's not some of the options that we were talking about. Of course, Sejuani, another popular one, um, kind of less the Pioshik flavor. I do feel like so that's why I was kind of talking about some of these other ones instead. Dead. But it is going to be so strong playing towards topside. They should have a heavily winning 2v2. They have hard engage, obviously, with the Rakan, with ultimates from the Sejuani. They have good dive as well with the Ari as well as the Kai'Sa. So it's really all about going forward and trying to pile in on Kati and Slater. And it's going to be up to the rest of Gam to keep them safe, to buy that space for them to fight. Yeah, th this, whole, this draft is Summit saying, pass me the ball right yeah. now. I will push you across the finish line. Uh, the the Sejuani pick is a big four summit here. Jax plus Sejuani is way, way lopsided. Really goes to show why they weren't worried about the Cassante matchup, because that gives a big advantage to the Jax side. Absolutely. And 
he is a guy that you want to give that ball in the lane phase. It's just a matter of can he make it work in the team fights? Will he play safely in those side lanes or will he be able to pick on him? And the big advantage from Jack Sejuani comes a lot early stages because Wukong wants to farm to six. Wukong is a level six jungler, really, really high priority on that. So there should be a lot of early minutes here in lane phase where Team Liquid, Pioshik, Summit, they can look for some top side plays. Well, we've had back and forth in the top side throughout multiple lanes so far in this series. It is elimination time. Loser of this is going home. One way ticket, either back to the States or back to Vietnam. And we're going to ask the question, you know, who's more deserving? They both deserve to be here, but winning Whoever this wins. game, that's <laughs> right, Adele's <laughs> answered it. We don't have to wait any longer. We'll get into Summoner's Rift here in the fifth international for GAM and the fifth world for TL. And I think that's the beauty of this system. It's a best of three. You can't say, ah, they just cheesed me out. They got one game. They didn't deserve it. Exactly. Whoever wins is the deserving team to advance forward in the Swiss, and whoever loses, Tough luck, you should have played better. You had the opportunities here, so we're gonna see if they can step it up. Well, it's gonna be the engage from Core JJ. Counter-Strike there as well. Bit of damage to be done, but they need Pure Sick to be closer than he is. A bit of grasp, okay, a win for TL, but there is time for Kiaya to go back and reset. Yeah, he's gonna go all the way back to the turret here, make sure there's nobody sneaking around. They don't actually leave behind any deep ward from the side of Team Liquid, and Gam sneak in and they put uh, the extra one over onto blue buff. Looks like Summit will be the human ward. Yep, he's waiting over there. So at least I think wants to see if they're going to be starting on this. It may do a really late ward. Um, so we'll have to see if he does end up actually going for that ward in a rate as the start is happening, just so it lasts a little bit longer. And with his positioning, I'm assuming he's going to ward the blue on spawn. The tail start on their own. Again, vision gathered here by Gam on the blue side. They're the ones that chose this. I know we talked about statistics before, stronger teams there. Um, but has been successful so far in the tournament. Absolutely. Summit in the end, gentlemen, further to your point, wore down quite late to see that crossing all the way over to the top side. Yeah, exactly. So so while TL doesn't have eyes on the jungler, you kind of know what he's doing, right? Yep. You have a ward on Raptors, you have a ward on Blue, so he's doing red, he's gone to Krugs. That is very easy to kind of figure out unless he's doing something really weird. Um, but with the lane obviously leashing bot, uh, it should be pretty clear where he is going to be. And we'll have to see how TL does want to start this out, because it is a bot to top clear here for Pioshik. Obviously, you want to end on the side of your melee soul laner with that Jax. Yeah, as we were talking about, the whole reason for the draft up there. And let's see that wave uh, built up here by Summit. Pioshik, how badly he's going to look like he's going to go towards mid instead. But we also had Ki uh, Kati move up and ward Raptors. So seeing that Raptors are still there, Going to expect probably Sejuani on bottom side coming through here. Kati needs to play top towards his ward. Hang on, early gank from Piosik to get the flash out. It depends. I mean, there'll be a permafrost Angle. shortly, but one more auto to get it. Kati just walks it out and graciously holds his summoners. But I do like this kind of a play. You know, don't overcommit to it. Don't spend your summoners. Get a little bit of chunk. He didn't spend a lot of time doing it. You yep. know, he's just crossing from bot over towards top, so he'll keep up the farm. I uh, will be slightly behind for a moment behind Levi, but it's not a big deal. And I do think uh, it's those little pressure moves that can help to give a bit of room for APA to make something happen in mid. So here in this early game, while we have some time, I want to ask you guys a little bit more about Gam. I know you talked about TL and the top side focus here in the early game. With the Sejuani, we kind of didn't expect for Pyosik, but for Gam, you know, we're seeing Wukong with Syndra. We're seeing big alt buttons here. So I want you guys to walk me through as to what Gam's focus should be here in this early game. I personally expect them to go heavily towards Kati to play around this Syndra. We saw that from them in their first win. And I think uh, with Kiaya, who to me is their big star yep. off of carry, I think it is going to be more about playing towards mid, trying to enable this Syndra. You're trying to get Pallet out of lane. If you get pushed there, move him up and use that mid lane pressure to then move into Heralds, move into Dragons. And that's kind of what I'm expecting. And kind of like I referred to earlier, it's going to be a later start for Gam because yep. they've got the Wukong who wants to get to his level six, whereas Sejuani can make earlier moves. You can just use Permafrost and use these stuns to try and get the jacks going early. It is a pushing wave here towards Summit. Yeah. So Summit's job now is a little bit of acting. Oh, and the full commit there as well. We didn't see it, but out of vision, Summit has to flash away. Levi in the right place, right time. Piosic can't get out and get it likewise. Advantage for Gam there, Wait. but they're going to go back in. They are. Counter-Strike's there. Kyaya flashes away. That's a double stun, but it is a fake clone, ladies and gentlemen, as Piosic runs back in. This is chaotic. What is happening? Stuns up. Gam like will take it. They get first blood. Piosic runs in, trades it off, but now Kyaya. She's got a flash. She's got a flash. Oh, he ain't cute in any way. You're right with the flip back. Kasante with a double. Double kill for Kyaya. They have had 
so many games start like that and Levi on his signature Wukong comes up huge. Even with the blue buff to red buff disadvantage there, really, really good clone from him. And Nazale, you kept calling it. Where was the flash? I mean, I think he was trying to wait for the Q3 and then reactively flash it. I just don't think he realized that the W was going to come back up to be able to buffer it. So the W stun came through, guarantees the Q3 lands, and then you're just going to be dead. So that is definitely an unfortunate one. But that was the closest of margins. Your Summit just took too much damage in that earlier trade because the jump came first from Levi. So it's just really well played by Gam. You're in this disadvantageous 2v2, but because they got the gun, because they got that better po uh, poke down, it worked out. And because Levi just did a regular full clear up to the top side on the Wukong, uh, he can just go for clear number two here. Wukong going to be accelerated towards that level six. Pioshik. Can he really do anything? Depends on APA who comes in. No uh, Spirit Rush available, excuse me. So Cardi just walks it out. Yeah, I mean, Pioshik, in instead of doing the full clear himself, he made two visits towards mid lane, didn't get a flash either time. Um, so definitely going to be a Levi lead. And it's concerning because we talked about this red side draft being built around Summit. That yep. 2v2 goes bad, and now you are behind. Yes, eventually Jax does outscale, but when he gets two early kills and a double buff, you are set so far back. And again, to me, Summit's trying to do a little bit of acting, but this Q3 pushed him really low, and it's a beautiful setup because the Q3 into the W scoops him into Levi and gets us down this early chunk. And then it's really kind of just a bit of disrespect from Kiaya, who is Oom, that allows Pioshek to go back in. They have this flash away from Kiaya. Summit surviving for a long time. They have the permafrost stack. They look to go for the re-engage, but they just can't quite finish flash. off Levi. Oh. Levi with the Q flash away. Pioshik tries to follow and does get the one kill, but as you know. So rough. I mean, early game for Cam. It's a 1K gold lead off the back of that as well. Just about bounty in the top side. We already talked about the importance of the matchup for top four TL. And Levi wasn't even level 6. He is about to get there now. Kati level 6 now as well. This is when we said Gam will start coming online too. Yeah, I mean, this is such a battle top lane too. Summit had the best top laner stats for lane phase. Uh-oh. <laughs> in the league, in the LCS. Uh, same thing for Kiaya in the VCS. You know what else Summit had was the lead for isolated deaths, right? You know, that was one of his struggles is that he was often getting picked off, but it's going to be potentially another jump. Kyoshi okay. gets spotted, but... Round two, Brawl in the top lane. Gam might say go. Yeah, they know. Oh, waiting for the flip back. Doesn't land. Okay. Summit okay. Well, Corsair here too. Makes it difficult. Levi going to be spotted out. There's a the counter-strike, the Arctic Assault, but... Levi is out of there in the nick of time. Oh, they're actually pulling mid over as well. Ari's even roaming. How bad did TL want this? They, they need to just reset the wave at this point, right? I don't think it's about the fight anymore. Core is still around, Unless though. Unless they find a pick. Everyone's in. Pallet made the roam up, too. Summer tip back all out there. Tara Johnny's about to die. Well, Levi deals with the rest. He's now level six. So a Cyclone there as Summer dies again. It is about Kiyaya Yaya in the top side. Oh, that's three for the Kazante. That is a brutal. No way does Core JJ die. He's got Piosik nearby. Let's just dance it out, he might say. As Jan Kati is coming up. Kaisa's walking up. The new target, if he gets up in time. I mean, no water to spot him Level out. Six? Level six, you mentioned. But will it be the trigger pull? Because it's about Herald now. We just live in topside. Pioshik is trying to soak XP for six, I think, here. We'll see if he can get it. He just got six. That is really big. So that's why he was sitting mid. Yeah, even with top lane dying, TL are going to make a power push for this Herald. Zaya's going to stay bottom, so we'll keep an eye on Slater and see how many turret plates Slater can get. Now we have Kaisa heading back down to try and deny those turret plates and actually collect the minion wave since it's a large one. TL getting paid the respect of the time being, but not starting the Herald. Again, balancing between as Slater and Yon stay towards the bottom side. And just a quick note that Piosik has gone back to farming too. I'm glad we get to have a small breather from that one, gents, because top has just been, I, I feel like, game-defining, right? That's fair to say with what's been happening in the top side. Absolutely, and it's just such a massive lead now for Kiaya. He's going to get to that Mythic way faster than Summit. You can see TL wanted to protect Summit, wanted to get the wave in, weren't able to do it, and it ended up being Summit dying again and the kill going to Kiaya, which is just the worst possible situation for them. But now they're setting up on bot side for a potential dive towards Slater or a dragon move here, and we'll see if TL can actually find something. On the pallet, Arctic Assault doesn't connect. Nice, He's nice, gonna nice. run, crash down. You're right, but the ulti follows up. TL are gonna move all parts in to kill the support. Finally get some resources on their side. And they want to give it to APA, but Piosik takes it on the Sejuani. <laughs> but at least it's a kill.
You're not on Kindred this game, bud. You're supposed to give those <laughs> over. <sighs> All right, well, let's see how much damage this Sejuani can do because it also results in a Dragon bottom side for Team Liquid. So while they are significantly behind in gold, still over 1,000. I don't know if it does. Oh, my goodness, they, they can't Pio. finish. Levi moving in with ult and lovely counter. I just noticed that, gentlemen. We have a 10-second counter on the ulti. That just shows us that Levi's back up and ready to charge. That is almost a that is a thousand gold difference just in the top lane though. Huge. So pretty much the whole gold difference up there for Gam. They are able to scare him away. Team Liquid Pioshek at least gets the Scuttle Crab Vision, but the Scuttle Crab Vision is just going to watch as they take the objective Her afterwards. Seats. Yeah, <laughs> we can see you. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gam's watch through enjoy. the early game. I mean, ten minutes in, still that gold lead present. We've always talked about it. I feel like I'm flogging a dead horse at this point, but it's known for VCS. Huh? But Gam <laughs> especially is... All right, well, we're mid-tier right there. Just to show us where Gam's trajectory really are with the way this game's going. Now, another tangent as well. I mean, Kati with a decent-sized CS lead, about 10 in the mid lane. I guess something we can focus on afterwards, isn't it? Because we get to look at topside again. Yeah, exactly. TL at this point were no longer looking for the fight. They were just looking to reset the wave. But they didn't anticipate the roam here from Pallet. Core was moving down back towards mid, heading down towards bot side. He thought that's where Pallet was. But Pallet shows up and they just preempt the play. They go for the hard engage. So again, Gam outplaying on that top side. They have been the better ones up in that top lane. And it is that massive leap for Kiaya. He's basing now. He has Ice Form for sure. Uh, and he does have his TP available, so there's the Mythic, there's him TPing back in, and he TPs on the wave because he knows he's way stronger than Jax, so Jax now, you can see on the minimap, has to back off. He can't crash the wave. Yep. Summit just has to give full control until he at least has his Mythic, but he's far away. What do you do at this point? Kobe, start walking me through how TL can mitigate some of this early game top disadvantage. How do you get yourself back in the game? You gotta pray. Pioshek said God has abandoned us, uh, so oh, no. Pioshek's gonna have to pull it up then, and I, maybe that's why he's taking the kills on Sejuani. Maybe at least a Bami Cinder, some some little bit of damage there uh, <laughs> might actually help, but honestly, no. The serious look back into it is that you have to slam some big plays with an Ari pick. Yeah. Top lane is already over a thousand gold down. That is a really rough one to try and fight, since that thousand gold is not just uh, theoretical, that's not just numbers, that's a real Iceborne Gauntlet completed. So you have to make a big play on Ari, you have to make some picks oh, here. Like that, I mean, would have been nice. Charm disconnected. Cuddy with some great sidestepping through is flash from someone in the top side. Kiyaya again, he doesn't need any help anymore, he's doing it yeah. himself. And that's the problem Whoa. with Pallet. Down he goes, Pallet not finding anything but a couple of summoners burnt over the wall. APA, Piosic, everyone is out right around this dragon area. I mean, that's huge, because he didn't have to spend his flash. His flash was his top side, so he gets two summoners just for the ulti, and they're going to drop Herald. They have very little wave clear here to deal with this. DL just getting ran around the map now. Gam doing such a good job, but Kati doesn't have to be careful. Ult over the wall! Step too far forward. He's already burned. His flash has to go through in the end. And that's the missing flash and ulti from APA. He couldn't get in range fast enough to follow up with the charm, unfortunately. Sure. Otherwise, that would have been a kill on Kati, but at the very least, they do get a summoner back. Uh, but it is, you know, closing in on that 2,000 gold lead here now for Gam. Gam, so, they're so comfortable right now. I mean, Kati on his Syndra, Levi on his Wukong. Massive, massive early game gold lead over oh, 2,000 oh. now. But Core JJ is looking to... And, and Levi's here. Flash. Levi's here. Flash. Quickness is there. You're right. But does he care with the quickness down? The, the ignite. Out he goes. Okay. Smooth criminal. I didn't realize. We had Michael Jackson on Summoner's Rift. <laughs> Levi tried to block it there. He Ws forward to take the charm. So he's doing everything he can to try and block for Kati. But Core JJ has the ignite down. Finishes it. Yep. Nicely played. They get the kill. He's flashless. Did look risky there. I was pretty nervous to see him go for that. Um, but Levi did not have his ultimate, so that's good tracking because if he had his ultimate in that situation, I think he can get turned around yep. uh, with that additional CC. But they do get a kill. Unfortunately, it does go over to core, so it's not really that big a deal. And you can see Summit, when you get behind Cassante, there's just no outplaying Cassante. Like, he just kind of walks at you and hits you. That's, that's the kind of tank experience when you're playing a carry from behind. So Summit just has to kind of mitigate loss, make sure he's keeping up his farm. Hopefully, he can get a good fight later or find some towers later or something to kind of claw back towards parity. And it's even more frustrating than the normal take experience because he rushes Iceborne, so if he hits you once, then he's going to keep hitting you forever. Yeah. So you can't go out into lane or he actually can have kill pressure on you, unlike a lot of other tanks, and Kiaya knows it. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, he's just harassing him on every minion, hitting those Qs nonstop. We can see in the MasterCard lane economy snapshot, the lead really is just top lane. Yep. This is a very close game besides that, so TL can still be confident in the 4v4s if they think they can execute. But when Kiaya gets involved, 
this guy is going to be a nightmare because he's at that point where he can be soloing out your backliners. He can be tanking up all of the damage. He can kind of be doing it all. I feel like, I mean, again, Kiaya, star player. It's so funny. We're setting up. This game was going to be about Cardi. This game was going to be about Levi and their combination is the all out in top side again. But under the turret, he's playing so dangerously. Summon is a couple of Natofo strikes away, but Kiaya misses. And now we're playing on the edge. Tiptoe, tiptoe, and the Tofo, out he goes, Summit, running through his head what he can do, and he'll survive at least for now. Really well played there by Summit to be able to survive, you know, pick up most of the farm as well, and now Kiaya likely has the base because with Counter-Strike back up, you could go in for the Leaf Strike and the kill. As TLR pushing through mid, that's a big deal because he gets to 11 and he'll have his Mythic on this base, so Summit not dying there is huge. Yep, that was one of the kill timing windows for Kiaya. Can't complete it, but the rest of the team is still going to come through the river, try and get vision control before this dragon uh, arrives on the rift. And after pushing mid, they can slip right back towards Hex. And with that push through, Hex Flash is threatening from Pallet. They're going to find the turret on top of that as well. But Teal coming Summit in. Behind Summit them. now ready to make his impact in the game. The multi or against the wall, gentlemen. It's all down to this moment. Teleport in the middle. There we go. Core JJ. Quickness Ooh. on everyone. The Magnet Storm, though, could re engage. And Slate is untouched. But Summit is making huge impact. They just need to finish the kills, but they can't. They don't have enough damage. And the circles work out for Gam. It's three for one and the dragon. Teal are going to try to retreat up towards the top side and see if they can make something happen over at the Herald. The initial engage and pick was great on Kati, but Levi, Slater were not taken down. They were turning around so much damage. And again, Jan really wasn't that involved. He was kind of just hitting front line, never found an angle to get into the back line and try to assassinate someone. Watch the charm over the wall from APA. The surf fight starts out good, it's just not enough. Yeah, Core JJ gets the timing here. He locks him up, knocks him up, so he's standing still. They follow through with the charm, and that's one assassinated. But so much damage from Levi, from Slater there. And Kiaya just gets to go wild as well. And I think APA just got too far ahead of themselves. I think he needed yeah. to alt a different angle up into the river, but not over the wall into the into the meat grinder there, because he Base just got plant. shredded when he went in from all that CC. TL at least steal away this Herald to try to scrape something back, but this is starting to feel very much like game one. It's now a 3,000 gold lead. It is a 2-0 Dragon lead, and TL, that may have been, you know, one of their kind of final moments where they can have a fight on even parity, or at least close to. It's sad to give them credit, right? Because, I mean, for TL, you look at that fight maybe from an even gold perspective with everything hitting. Maybe it looks more successful. It could actually go towards them, but for Gam, the early game is reigning supreme once again, as you already mentioned. With someone going home here today, I mean, Gam, fighting chance right here. So big for the organization that in groups and previously at Worlds has always kind of failed to hit the mark. Yeah, and they're going to be able to potentially take this best of three, you know, against TL. That would be huge. It would be the first, you know, best of win against NA uh, from them would be really, really big. Yeah. And Pioshek trying to threaten, see if he could force out a flash just with that Arctic Assault forward. But this is a team that went through some roster changes. You know, their bot lane is different than the one they had at MSI. You know, some of these changes came out pretty late. And Gam has really been building towards this. They feel confident. They wanted to show what they can get done on the world stage. And thus far, they are the better team than TL. Yeah. Changing the bottom lane pretty big for them. Slater coming in, then Pallet much later towards playoffs. And the top side core has been so, so valuable for yep. them. Levi, currently the 26 and 4 record on Wukong, and he's looking pretty close at that 27 and 4. He's looking really, really good. And I mean, it's just fun to watch Levi. You know, he came over to NA for a while, was playing 100 Thieves Academy, yeah. and I kind of miss seeing him internationally because he's what I really associate uh, this VCS squad with as we're going to see the charm miss there from APA. But Levi just has so much history international, and he's been one of those really exciting players that you show up from these regions that maybe you're not expecting to win the tournament, but he can always get cool things done, you know, really showcasing his skill and going to be able to force out the ulti. Uh, and they're going to claim the top one tier one off of that. Yes, there's going to be a trade back potentially here in mid as they drop a Herald there, but we'll see what else they can get. Well, that's a good question, because at least if the Herald can get a second charge, maybe add more pressure here for TL through mid. But the turret does equalize the gold a partial amount, almost the 2,000 gap that's been brought down to. As Levi continue to be a nuisance here for TL in PO6 jungle. He'll just back out in the end as well. So, gents, we've got two minutes before Dragon. 45 seconds before the Baron spawns up in this game. I think we need to start looking at what this mid game's going to look like more and more. What side lane's going to look like more and more. Because we're expecting coming into this that TL were going to play through this Jax. He would be unbeatable in sides. 
But again, 0-3 still trying to grasp at his second item. Yeah, I mean, we just had our second item completed here for Kiaya with the Abyssal coming in. Oh, wow. Tons of magic resist uh, for him, and he's going to be able to shred people for Kati. But it should look like Gam pushing up mid as well as bottom, getting there first. Uh, and being able to secure themselves, number three, a minute and a half left on this a mountain dragon. Usually a minute before, you'll go back and get some control wards, replenish them, move into the river so that you've got the vision. And when you have vision superiority and you're the ones with Wukong and the long-range sons of Syndra, then it makes it so scary for Team Liquid to even think about coming in there. And I honestly don't think Team Liquid should go for a bottom side play there uh, if they give up the vision and just give up number three and look for a better opportunity. Well, I mean, that's the biggest inflection point, right? Because if you give up number three, then one mistake, one pick, one steal means they get soul, that permanent power. Yep. So you have to make the judgment call. Can we realistically win this fight? Because if you go to that third dragon and you lose the fight, you're going to lose the dragon, you're likely going to lose the Baron, and that's it. Your world is probably over, barring some crazy turn of events. So TL have really got to be confident. You know, generally at this kind of goal points, you know, I look at item completions, right? And I think they have a better chance of having two before game have three if they fight at soul point, you know, on that fourth dragon instead of the third. But it's a tough call to make because, again, one mistake means soul if you give up three for free. Your whole year done and dusted just in that single moment, in this single game. Again, for such talented players. Or JJ's deep here, but it is a no Cassante, damage. so... Uh, He's going to take about a year to die. You say hello, and then you say goodbye. That's right. And look, he can turn into a champion like a Relier at any second, too. And this is clearly the option. They're just going towards topside. They want to try to push down something, but they're not strong enough to threaten Baron. They can't actually bully out Kiaya, so they're just getting nothing here. They've got a blast cone flank from Levi, too. I mean, he's going all in. Yon has trouble. his summoners. Who is it, though? Cyclones out. Teleport the match, but running into the Cyclone, not always the best option. Yon ulties out. Maybe a chance for Teal to turn around, but Palace engage. It's huge! Gam will never say die as Kiaya ulties again. Summit getting the League of Legends Summoner's Rift experience. Let's Gam have the pick. And now Baron's on the table. This is massive for Gam. That could be the final nail in the coffin here. They're going to be starting up this Baron. There is a ward on it, so TL are aware of it, but they've got no summoners. They've got no mid laner. They've got no anything here, but they're going to try to contest it because this is their life on the line right now. Yoast is going to have to try. Come on, you're a world champion. Show us what you got. But Baron down even with the Miss Smite. It doesn't matter. Scatter the week was enough. And Gam can taste their journey continuing here at Worlds 2023. All right, maybe Team Liquid rush for a consolation prize Mountain Dragon here for themselves. But even with that, the Baron empowered recall. Gam are getting out there pretty quick. It's Kaisa damage, though. They got it, but it's just it's just not enough, right? They're falling so far behind, and now you have the Baron buff uh, to deal with. And this is just so tough for TL. And APA in these last couple fights, you know, you're on this R, you have high mobility, but he's just getting knocked up by the Cyclone, yep. pulled in by Pallet's ultimate. He's never really getting much done in these fights, and Yon is getting pressured out. You know, he hasn't been able to find a good angle. We're never seeing what you want from this comp, which is the Plasma on the backline, dive in, assassinate those backliners, put pressure on Kati and Slater. It's always been TL on the back foot because Gam just started engaging and playing better. Yeah, I mean, that was literally Levi's solo blast cone in there. Being surprised, there's extra people, don't care, has ultimate, big chunk out on the carries, and the rest of Gam following up, they just absolutely murder them. Now, power play on bottom side, 4-1 split push with the Baron. This Baron power play by Red Bull's already up by 2.3k. The range of this cannon minion, top side looking to be traded by APA, but the problem is, if Gam continues this aggression, APA with no teleport. So he's going to have to walk down. He's going to have to make a play. Let's see what Gam can do in the trade as Inner is already dropping down. Honestly, they keep the split push up. Team Liquid trying to get something back for themselves. Yeah, might APA does here. get it there, but they're going to have to give up a lot. They, ca they can't fight this. It, it's just, you know, if you don't think you can defend anyway, then you want to get as much gold as you can off the map. But sure. even if you get the second tower, you're giving up a lot on the other side of the map. They have no wave clear. It's not the Jack split pushing, it's the Ari, who's really some of their only wave clear. And he might just oh, kill no. himself. Uh, Spirit Rush is oh. there. Unleash power, not enough orbs. So they sit on the ground in a puddle and just walk away. <laughs> APA with the ult out as well. And it's still looking great. I mean, the Baron power play is at 3K. It's a decent Baron power play. And we'll look again, guys, because this might be the game defining, the series defining play for TL. Again, this is Levi solo by himself. Blast comes into the back and he absolutely murders Yon. Yep. He forces Yon's ultimate with his own ultimate. He survives with his own clone, and by that time, he's bought enough time for Gam, the rest of the team, to get here. The team that's so far ahead that they push out the rest of TL. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, they get that kill onto APA. It was great positioning from Slater. He was auto attacking him over the wall while his team is CCing them up. You know, they did get that stopwatch off Gatti in the fight, but it doesn't matter. He's got the Zonius completed. The item completions are so much better for Gam. And they have no real answer for Kiaia. No one can actually punch through this guy. They have no threat in side lane. Summit's trying to keep him in that side lane to just make it a, a 4v4, which is more beneficial for your team. But you're down 6,000 gold. It's so rough, and I mean, we're still with the rest of the Baron here. It's just going to expire now, but another inner turret getting pressured should be falling down. Kiaia, who can teleport in at any moment as well. Gold given over, 7,000 the lead. It is a slow burn right now for North American fans as they sit here watching TL crumble. And Gam have the luxury of time here. They, they can continue to split push. Kiai's got teleport, Kati's got, got teleport, and there's two minutes left on the next Dragon here. So they don't have to let anything be traded back into the hands of Team Liquid as long as they are slow and controlled. So are you telling me if they're not? That's how TL come back. Because I have to yeah. ask you. TL have to make one of these risky picks. plays. They have to just throw multiple people out of side lane. Yeah. If you just try and get the minimum here and you just defend all lanes, you're not going to come back in the game. So what you have to do in this case is sacrifice one lane. Okay, fine. Gam, you know, you get mid push or whatever. Throw multiple people from Team Liquid side to try and attack that split pusher, trailing with extra resources because you're not going to have even fight victories. One of, the, one of the biggest problems, though, is that the only person who's exposing himself in the side lane at all is Kiaia. And yep. you're never going to kill him Good unless luck. you have three people, maybe. And then if you overload that side of the map that heavily, Gam is probably taking your base on the other side. You know, Kati sometimes pushes out waves, but he never extends past the river if he doesn't have people behind him, it feels like. So they're just not really getting these opportunities. It's like, great, you see Kiaia again. Who cares? You can't hurt him. I mean, APA even going to take him on. Look at this damage. It's like hitting a tree with your bare hands. Knuckle back as one more to get out, but APA getting chased down. Solo killed. Core JJ has to say, what happened to my mid laner? He's flipped back, he quicknesses out, but Kiaya is putting on a clinic. It is the day of Gam here as the support is just trying to survive. I mean, Kiaya just roasted him and surprise! See you later, Gam with another one. It is getting worse as TL. This might be their pick though on to Levi. They all jump in, but Palace Alt is even better. Double spin to win a scatter of the week. TL might be getting close to getting kills, but they're not getting it. Gam are looking to stay alive here at Worlds. The VCS is representing. I think it just about does it. They are crushing Liquid in this final game. Every mistake TL is making is being punished. And Pioshik likely to be chased down here as well. He is a legend. He is a world champion from DRX. And right now he is falling to Gam. He is falling to Levi. He's about to be 300 gold. He's about to be raw meat on the platter. Guys, I don't know if you had dinner before coming here, but this is getting me hungry for some more. Levi, 6, 1, and 5. It really has been his Wukong game. Now we see why this guy wins on this champ. I mean, he is just crushing them. It's really all been about the play around the top side. Levi and Kiaia outplaying him. And then again, a solo kill there from Kiaia. APA just really didn't want to commit the ulti. He was trying to greet it out, hoping that he could. And then by the time he did, the buffers from Kiaia interrupting the dashes, falling over the wall was massive as core is going to be pushed back. Gom, Gom is so strong. They just start up the Baron. They can do whatever they want and just draw TL to them because they know they're going to win every single fight. Yeah, I mean, the, the origin of that play with, with the Ari, they actually had Core JJ looking around for the flank, but because uh, Kiaia is able to push him out, they never even get to join up by the time he's dead. That Baron is down, APA's got to run, and Team Liquid now, all of their hopes for this year, all the work that they put in, they've got to defend at inhibitor turrets with the onslaught that is Gam coming. Here you see it, Core JJ down there, they were originally looking uh, to try and have a flank, but then Core JJ trying to figure out which way they're going, which wall he's going over, he's like, all right, this play is done, we are out, we can't do anything, and that's all three charges as well. Uh, of the RE ultimate, you can't get away. Then Core JJ has to run the gauntlet. And as you know, everybody goes marching in one by one. Yeah, I mean, I, I think basically they were hoping that it was Kati that was going to show up. As soon as as soon as they saw that it was Kiaia, I think Core had no no intention of ever engaging. No. He was just going to back it up. And then this is clearly just, just desperation, right? You know, TL know they've basically already, you know, in such a desperate spot, they're in such a horrible position. They're saying, hey, maybe we can find a pick, maybe we can make something happen, but Yosha getting caught out again. We just watched him die, and I think we're going to again. I mean, again, it might be a long chase, but this could lead to the end. Kati with another one. 
I mean, TL, guys, this is the team that always goes par for the course at Worlds. This is the North American team that at least people can rely on will go somewhat even in groups where they're not making out of it. But here, 0-2, about to go 0-3, about to go home early. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but it's their worst <laughs> result in history. Right now, Gamma pushing into their base. But on the other end, you know, this is one of the biggest wins for the VCS ever, being able to get Absolutely. a best of win here. You know, taking down Lick would be a massive accomplishment for them. And they're trying to put the finishing touches on what has been an amazing game from their top side. Kiaya and Levi, it was all about them. They outplayed TL in that early 2v2. That set the snowball rolling. Great rooms from Pallet. Helped to hammer that home. And the 5v5s have just been played better by the VCS. So beautiful to watch as well. Kiaya with another flip back. This top lane has been clutching it out alongside Levi's. Piosic used that stopwatch to buy himself a bit of time. But dinner is calling here for Gam. 10k gold <laughs> lead. Double inhibitor down. And they're just dotting the I's, crossing the T's lining up the alphabet in whatever order they want. Yeah, they do have the luxury of extra time here. Um, two minutes again on another Dragon arriving, the possible soul for them, being able to consistently push this lead. Team Liquid, two inhibitors down as well. It's so hard to leave your base now at this point that once this Dragon arrives, they're going to be forced to either just sacrifice soul and then fight the Mountain Soul inside your base with very little defense, or go through Gam Vision and kind of march to your deaths into that meat yeah. grinder of a team. And so you kind of you kind of are just faced with a lose-lose situation there. They're going to hope for some fog of war plays during the resets, sometimes during the scramble. You know, it's it's a similar, like, low percentage play, but you're hoping that there's something out there. I mean, the most difficult thing for me is you want to say, okay, you win this game through picks. Zonia's Banshees. Uh. Stopwatch Maw. Uh. Stopwatch Maw. Uh. And then a full tank. And then a stopwatch on the support as well, right? There's just... Gam is, is being really intelligent with their itemization. You know, I do think that Slater, he's going for a very defensive build, but he knows he didn't have to be the carry in this game. He just has to not die. And they're so as long as they're now. marking the flanks, and as long as TL doesn't get that dream perfect fight, there's just no way for them to win straight up. So hard to ask for under their last inhibitor turret. They try. There's the ulti from Piosic, but it drops down anyway. Gam cannot. This minor region running into the major. Here we go. They cannot scatter the weak pallet down, and he jumps down. Another one bites the dust. The world champion from last year is dust. As Gam run into the Nexus, another great stun from the mid laner of the VCS. As Gam have outseeded expectations, they're getting burnt down. At least TL are holding on someone as APA gets rooted up. He's been outclassed again. Kiaya takes him over to Narnia through the line, through the witch, through the wardrobe, and now the finishing touches. It's game time in Korea! Well, uh, Kobe couldn't have said it better <laughs> as the poke comes through, but they're getting low. TL are holding out. They don't want to go home just yet. Gam putting the finishing touches on. Look at the health bar. TL are still trying to keep this going. <laughs> but every stun, every auto, it goes on somehow, but TL are trying, trying. Not to soul. get on that plane. Soul, soul. Exactly. They're just going to retreat back to this soul and try to guarantee it. Their health was getting low. One of the only ways you maybe start a comeback from TL is if they overstay, if they all die in the base, if the soul gets denied. But it's just who else but this top side. Cotty finds the beautiful scatter there, sets it up. Yon is down to 20% HP immediately. He has to use all flash cleanse, all in retreat, not able to add any damage. And then again, in goes Kiaya, finds that flip here just shortly after this onto APA. As he was trying to get aggressive, Kiaya has been so good for Gam on this Cassante. Yeah, just pushed around there. Scout of the Week and the Cassante Ultimate. Nowhere to run. Now there are no inhibitors down. The Mountain Soul was picked up by Gam during that replay. And now they're coming to do their victory march towards that Nexus. As you said, I mean, look, Kiaya having a field day and Oh, is that 100%? Can you have 100%? Well, you feel confident. Cutting with a flash scatter of the week. Finish it in style. They blow him up, and Yon is somehow shut down at 0 and 2. Levi spins once again 50 seconds on that 80 carry of Team Liquid. And can do their victory march. And boy, do they deserve it. At 0 and 2, they hold on. At 0 and 2, they take down TL. A scatter of the week again, a double flip. 
Tiaya on Kasante. A new bannable offense as Summit got outclassed. We remember hyping this guy up, but this game, he was nothing. A scam stay alive here at World. They'll send the North American third seed home and they'll show up big for the VCS. And boy, do they deserve it. Outplay after outplay after outplay on the top side of the map. Kiaya getting massively fed. Huge performance from Levi on his Wukong again. Talking about comfort picks here. They really made him work. Tell you one thing, ladies and gentlemen. It was a beautiful series. And of course, our analyst desk will react and tell me how good the VCS are as we throw to them. Thank you so much. I mean, they didn't come into this best of three feeling any type of way, but confident as they take a bow in front of the crowd in Seoul, who were behind them when they started seeing that Gam played with absolutely no fear of losing. And, um, you know, I, I know we want to talk about TL as well, and we should, but I just want to take a minute to celebrate how incredibly huge this is. And the fact that Levi is still part of this. He started this years ago. He made us pay attention. And now he is the team to beat a major region in the LCS over on the world stage. Absolutely. I think we need to give them their roses. I believe this is the first time the VCS has taken a match against North America on the world stage. So huge congratulations. Best of first win. Yeah, massive milestone moment for Gigabyte Marines. I also do want to talk a little bit about TL as well because they are eliminated. We'll get a chance to talk about GAM in the next round because they're moving on. For Team Liquid, huge disappointment for them obviously right now. Oh. You can tell they put their heart and soul into this. And even though it feels absolutely devastating now, this team did come a long way. They oh. were eighth place in the spring split of LCS. They charged all the way to the number three seed in North America. And unfortunately, the oh run had God. to end here. Yeah, and Pioshek, a player that has known heartbreak in 2021 on DRX, going through some incredibly difficult times. And then in 22, uh, 2022, of course, out of seemingly nowhere, was able, reunited with Deft after 2020 DRX to win the World Championship. But unfortunately, his chance at defending his title ends here. And Pioshek, when he's happy, it's heartwarming. And when he's sad, it's heartbreaking. He feels both ends of the spectrum very, very intensely, yes. um, which is what helps him in moments. But obviously, it hits like a truck in moments like this. Um, we do need to crown our Oppo player of the series, and it is Kiaya. Um, we had our eyes on him going into this series to start. And I think when you look at kind of game one specifically and game three specifically, Moritz. He was able to consistently output the damage on the Rumble. And even though, you know, we talked about it didn't go Ignite, I think it's fine. This, to me, though, is a stroke of brilliance from Gam. The confidence to go into these early 2v2, because, as mentioned, we I, we were saying it in agreement as well, I've seen this situation a million times. Mm. The early 2v2 in this type of all-or-nothing situations is something that Summer generally gravitates towards. And once you win that, as decisive as they did. From that point on, TL are just fighting an uphill battle, trying to deal with the expectations, and going from almost being able to take down T1, or at the very least having a competitive game, to this yep. is heartbreaking. The Absolutely heartbreaking for them. Oh, but the Levi. was 23 wins, four losses for Levi. They, in the third game, I think they left some holes that Gam was very happy to take. It's his best champion, and you saw why. Yeah. I mean, you could see as the World Championship progressed, Team Liquid was having a hard time finding team compositions they were comfortable with. Yeah. They were really hamstrung in their band phase. They could, they really struggled to be able to pick winning lanes across the board. So things are going to creep through uh, at the end of the day. And the top jungle from Gam was really good. It's a win for Vibes. We saw them dance at the beginning of the day, and Gam turns out vibe check. good vibes. Yeah, the vibe Get it check done. is. It's close to undefeated. It's, it's good. It's very, very yep. good. Um, so we'll talk about this in cooldown later as well. But first, of course, we have another best of three coming your way after the break. It is time for the LAC's Team VDS to grab that much needed win versus D plus Kia in our featured matchup presented by Mercedes Benz. This is what you came for. It's do or die for BDS and D plus Kia in our featured matchup presented by Mercedes Benz. In what could be the biggest surprise of the tournament so far, 
DK sit with a 0-2 record after suffering losses to fierce opponents G2 and KT Rolster. Finally, they commit on to the croc, but they don't take out Kellen. They don't have the damage to take him out. Fans were singing the praises of World's poster boy Deft, but he could go from World's winner to Swiss State Sinner and get knocked out at the first opportunity. In world's history, only two Korean teams have failed to advance to the knockout stage. DK does not want to be the third. After a deep run starting in the world's qualifying series, BDS have failed to secure a crucial win in the Swiss stage. Even with Adam playing God and carrying BDS through planes, his unconventional picks are being banned away, leading to the question, what is BDS's identity without Adam carrying from the top lane? Mr. Q coming back up quickness though. Oh, oh, but he channeled it just in time. The buffer is beautiful from Adam as he looks for a little bit more as well. And he still lives on. BDS's underdog story was one for the ages, but their fairy tale could be in its final chapter as they face off against D plus Kia in a battle for survival.